good morning, happy Monday, praise the Lord, he has been good, he's awakened us and given us a new opportunity to seek his face and to know him, praise God for his grace and his mercy and the love that he shows his children, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning declaring that you are God, that you created all things, and that you love us with an everlasting love, and you have promised to protect, save, and give us wisdom so that we might be like your son Jesus. Help us, Father, to understand your will and your ways for our lives so that we might walk in truth and peace and have your joy even in this evil world. When we trust in you, we can walk in your glorious light and be filled by your Holy Spirit. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you. Amen. Amen. So this is um, starting the second lesson of the Christmas season. It's titled, Jesus Reconciling Sacrifice for Sin. <clears throat> the daily devotional is titled, A Sacrificial Lamb. Book of Exodus, chapter 29, verses 35 through 43. It says, And thus shalt thou do unto Aaron and to his sons, according to all things which I have commanded thee. Seven days shalt thou consecrate them, and thou shalt offer every day a bullock for a sin offering for atonement, and thou shalt cleanse the altar when thou hast made an atonement for it, and thou shalt anoint it to sanctify it. Seven days thou shalt make an atonement for the altar and sanctify it, and it shall be an altar most holy. Whatsoever touches the altar shall be holy. Now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar. Two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. The one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning, and the other lamb thou shalt offer at even. And with the one lamb a tenth deal of flour, mingled with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil, and the fourth part of a hen of wine for a drink offering. And the other lamb thou shalt offer at even, and shalt do thereto according to the meat offering of the morning, and according to the drink offering thereof, for a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. This shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations, at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, before the Lord, where I will meet you and speak there unto thee. And there I will meet with the children of Israel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. God requires payment for sin. Because he's a just God, he cannot overlook sin. But Jesus has paid the penalty for our sin if we repent and turn away from our sin. God restores us unto son and daughter status with him because that's his desire to have a unique relationship with his creation. Okay, Jesus reconciling sacrifice for sin. The central truth of the lesson is that Jesus' atoning work made the blessings of forgiveness and eternal life available to all. 
The focus is to affirm Christ's atoning sacrifice and accept the blessings of the atonement. The evangelism emphasis is that Jesus' atoning work made the blessings of forgiveness and eternal life available to all. The golden text says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without a spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? from Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 when we speak of Jesus sacrifice on the cross we might not grasp the historical significance of what his sacrifice meant where did the idea of sacrifice originate what all did Christ sacrifice accomplish where else does the notion of a sacrifice appear in the Old Testament. While there is no shortage of passages in the Old Testament where sacrifices are mentioned, all of those sacrifices fell short in washing away humanity's sin. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross was the final blood sacrifice God required. Previous to the coming of Christ, the Levitical law of the Old Testament required people of Israel to provide animal sacrifices for the atonement of their sins. The shedding of blood served as means of forgiveness for their sins. However, when Christ came, he lived a life no other human being could. And in living a perfect life, he laid it down so the sins of humanity could appease once and for all. Man, my little light stopped working. The sacrifice of Jesus is significant not only because it put an end to the Old Testament sacrificial system, but also because it represented the start of a new covenant under which we live today. This lesson will explore how the sacrifices in the Old Testament pointed to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross by which humanity and God are reconciled. All right, section one, the Passover lamb. Unleavened bread and a lamb's blood. Exodus chapter 12 verses 1 through 8 and verse 13. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smoke the land of Egypt. In preparation for leaving Egyptian slavery, God gave specific instructions to Moses and Aaron these instructions were vital as they would determine the future of the Israelite community's relationship to God. Therefore, as Levites and priests, Moses and Abraham and Aaron had an important
important role in communicating God's expectations to the people of Israel. The first set of instructions God gave to Moses and Aaron was to establish the Israelite calendar. God was preparing the people of Israel for a historic event. This life-altering event would redefine the parameters of their religious identity and mark a new age in their understanding as God's people. Another calendar milestone is seen in the modern day usage of BC before Christ and AD Anno Domini meaning in the year of our Lord. Thus the resetting of the Israelite calendar represented a new age era for the Israelite community. The second set of instructions was for each Israelite household to sacrifice a lamb without defect. After the lamb was sacrificed, the household was to eat the lamb along with unleavened bread. If a household was too small to eat a whole lamb on their own, they were to share the lamb with a neighbor household as a, com a communal commemoration. The sacrificial lamb symbolized Christ's body, which would be broken and sacrificed for all people. When Jesus established the observant of Holy Communion with his disciples, centuries later, the breaking of bread and drinking of wine symbolized a new commemoration of the Passover and the salvation of the people of God. The third set of instructions was for the Israelites to smear the blood of the Lamb on the tops and sides of the door frames of their homes. This would be a sign for the angel of death who would come to punish the Egyptians to spare the firstborn of that household. This act would display the power of the lamb's blood to protect the people of Israel from death. In the same way, the blood of Jesus Christ has the power to protect his people from death, promising new life through his resurrection. <clears throat> All right, section 1B, new bread and Christ's blood. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 8, and 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. 1 Corinthians 5, 6, you're glorifying is not good. Ye know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. 1 Peter 1.18 For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. In the first passage, Paul addressed the wickedness that existed within the Corinthian church. After addressing the sin of sexual immorality earlier in verse 1, he now focused on the pride and lack of repentance persisting within the Corinthian community regarding their sin. He said just a little bit of yeast can make dough rise. 
So, a little bit of sin can corrupt an entire community. Paul urged the Corinthians to purge out the sinful and unrepentant man from their community, just as God had commanded the Israelites to obedience by eating unleavened bread in the Exodus Passover, so Christ called his people into obedience by following his ways as the Passover lamb sacrificed in their place. When Paul said, keep the festival, this was not a literal festival, but an abomination to live the life of holiness to which call, God calls his people. Paul calls the Corinthian community to leave their old and sinful ways and to pursue the way of sincerity in truth in accordance with God's commands. In 1 Peter 1, the writer was addressing a dispensed and displaced Christian community scattered throughout the ancient world. He reminded them of the source of their salvation, encouraging them to remember their hope could not be found in the treasures and temptations of this world. Rather, it was a divine gift from God. Peter said the promises of this world lead to emptiness and bondage, not unlike the bondage their ancestors experienced repeatedly in the Old Testament. From this time, in servitude under the Egyptians to their captivity during the period of the Babylonian exile, their disobedience led to their folly. Peter went on to remind the dispersed and displaced Christian community that their hope was found in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, who died for their sins and purchased their freedom once and for all. The unblemished and pure state of the sacrificial lamb represented the perfect nature of Christ, which was innocent from sin. And yet, he who knew no sin became sin. The sacrifice of Christ purchased a freedom that all the riches of this world could not afford. The blood of Jesus is priceless. That's an insert here titled, Our Burden Taker. It says, imagine a heavy burden you've been carrying for years weighing you down and preventing you from moving forward. Then someone comes along and offers to take that burden from you, freeing you from its weight and giving you a fresh start. Jesus' atoning sacrifice offers us the chance to release our sins and be forgiven, accepting the blessing of eternal life. He has made available to all who believe in him. God is so very good. He's provided a way to pay for the sins that we will commit. And if we have faith in his sacrifice, the work he did on the cross to pay for the sins of this world, we can be in right relationship with our creator, his father, Yahweh. I praise God for this amazing, amazing plan of redemption. God 
created reconciliation for us so that we might be coming to him in faith, believing that he is God, accepting the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross at Calvary for the remission of our sins so that we might experience intimate relationship with our God and Creator. I thank you for your time this morning. I pray this lesson has encouraged you to accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, to walk in the truth that God has given us in his word and to be transformed into the image of his son who is perfect and spotless with no blemishes, no sin, no rebellion against the will of the Father. Thank you. Have a blessed week. A blessed day.